Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Okay, so raise your hand if your heart has been just a little bit troubled these past few days, these past few months. Even if you've been walking with Jesus for a long time. I was in, I don't hardly ever go out shopping, but I went out shopping uh, to Trader Joe's this past week. I was standing in the six foot marker lines before you go in. Somebody in back of me, you know, did a huge patooey, like spit right on the sidewalk in back of me. I did not have very good feelings towards this person. And, and normal? Not anytime soon. Bishop Lucinda has uh, sent out a pastoral letter this past week uh, to help people understand that it will be some time before we are gathering in large numbers in our churches again. And even when we do gather, we, there will be face coverings and uh, we will not be able to participate in Eucharist in the way that we're accustomed to. So, so if you feel a bit anxious or, or depressed or just don't have a lot of energy, that's okay. It's, it's normal. And it's normal to feel waves of grief. I was in the parish hall this past week. I had to go there to retrieve a book. And I was flooded with memories of that space when we're all there together. Um, eh, laughter, children, just the buzz of, you know, activity and energy. And I, I just, I felt very sad. This Mother's Day is different. I mean, maybe you're used to taking your mom out to brunch after church or, or having a, a large family gathering. Um, graduations are different. Funerals cannot be held in the same way. Gil passed away a couple of weeks ago, and you all have been terrific with sending um, Dottie cards and, and meals, you know, but it's painful not to be able to just hug her and comfort her. And the political divisiveness, you know, just continues on. Some parts of the country, you know, are pushing hard against medical advice and scientific data. A family dollar store guard was shot this and killed this past week because he asked a patron to uh, put on a mask. The Center for Disease Control is being um, you know, pressured to water down its re-entry guidelines. So we know about troubled hearts. Hearts that are troubled, not because of some imagined difficulties or threats, but hearts that are troubled because of very, of very real difficulties and threats. Jesus's friends had troubled hearts too. Jesus's days were numbered. When he gives, when he speaks to them um, like this, the, his days are numbered. And they, his disciples and friends, could be arrested and tortured as well. So they were scared for their safety. And their plans and dreams and hopes for the future, I mean, those were just dying rapidly on the vine. Jesus needed to give them a way forward needed to reach into their hearts and, and give them confidence. And, and if we can lean into that way uh, too, we will find that it is life for us as much as it was for them. And so as the way forward, he pointed to himself, you know, not to five steps to more grace or the nine at the nine attitudes of gratitude or the 10 best rules for living, but simply, simply to himself, to a relationship of trust with God and, and with him. Now, if you're hung up on the verse, uh, no one comes to the father except through me. Please remember, he is not giving a lecture uh, on the relative merits of all the various world religions. He is talking to a small group of friends and followers who are very frightened. And they, can, and, they, and they can't imagine what is going to come next. 
they know they aren't ready for whatever it is. And so Jesus looks at them and extends his hand to them and says, look, look at, look at me. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's not way out there. It's not in some complicated formula that you have to memorize. It's not in a lot of self-improvement that you need to, you know, get on the ball with. It's right here, through me, in me, with me. Confusing? Yes. A relationship is confusing and it's messy, but it's what the whole Gospel of John points to over and over again, this abiding in Christ, this relationship of trust and abiding that uh, in God and Jesus, that Jesus and the Father already enjoyed within themselves. This relationship of trust, this abiding in Christ, this is our dwelling place. It's our home, and it is absolutely secure. Now, I don't know what helps you meet the challenges in these days. I know that for me, putting on my walking shoes, going out the door and just walking for an hour or more helps a lot. Playing ball with my dog, Zami, helps. Uh, FaceTime with my grandchildren helps. Zooming with all of you helps. A structure and routine helps. Certainly morning prayer uh, with a dedicated group of people and you're always welcome to join us. Um, that helps. Netflix helps. An evening glass of wine helps. But ultimately, ultimately what helps and, and, and what will see us through is surrendering our lives and our futures to Christ. And then abiding in that relationship. And as we abide, as we abide, and as we kind of learn gradually to, to let go of the, of the controls of our own life, let God have the controls. You know, it's a process, doesn't happen all at once, you know, and we kind of go back, back and forth on that. Um, but as we learn to, you know, relax a little bit more about our own lives and, and surrender uh, into Christ, we begin to rely on the same things that Jesus knew and relied upon. And um, I'm going to give you four of those things. Number one, Jesus knew and absolutely relied on the truth that God is close by. You know, not way out there, not distant, not um, in ignorance of what is going on in our lives, but close by, as close as our breath. Maybe some, I've heard some people imagine it as, you know, God is in the next room. Maybe you're in the living room. God's in the kitchen cooking up a great meal. You know, however it works for you, know that God is close by. And secondly, that God is sovereign. God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-loving. And you get, as you as you abide in Christ, you begin to trust that sovereignty of God, even when things look dark and confusing, and the future is is unknowable. And third, God is close by. God is sovereign. And third, God chooses us, frail human beings. God chooses not to be God without us. And so God, as transcendent and sovereign and all-powerful as God is, God knows you by name. He loves you. You know, he doesn't back off knowing the full details of your life. That love doesn't, isn't put off by that. He heals you. He forgives you. He feeds your soul. God chooses us. And God has all the time that is needed uh, for us to get really secure in our dwelling places, which is which are in Him. You know, it's not our these mansions that this gospel reading talks about. These mansions are our dwelling places. Uh, the word means dwelling place, and it's not like a mansion far off in the sky. You know, when we die, that dwelling place is in this roomy 
spacious God that has all the time and all the space that we need for full and re for full redemption. Okay? And number four. This is the last one. Number four. Jesus knew and he trusted that as unprepared and as klutzy as those disciples were, and as we are, that they and we have all that we need. All that we need to be about the work of bringing heaven to earth. Because really, all they needed, all we need, is to abide in trust in him. So here's the four things I'm lifting up that Jesus knew and relied upon and that you can know and rely upon also. God is close by. God is sovereign. God chooses you. He chooses us. And fourth, you have all that you need. We have what we need to be about the work of bringing joy, hope, and abundant life into this world. I'll give you a couple, uh, just a few good news examples of that. 150 eggs were hard boiled this past week, made into egg salad sandwiches, and were and um, given as takeout lunches uh, for the hungry and the homeless. Our tutors continue uh, to be in contact with uh, children in Seaside who, you know, who need that contact. Um, the earth was cared for this week. More native plants were planted on our church grounds. People are finding us more as we're online more. Um, community and caring are offered through these small groups that we have going, and prayer for the world is offered every morning. These are the works. They might seem small, and they are small, but in God's heavenly realms, they are magnified more than we can ever know. So, my friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust in Christ, and move forward into whatever lies ahead of you, knowing that God is there, working ultimately for the good. Amen.